Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. Wanted to go over some stuff today about getting started with automation, easy stuff to get started, why I think everyone should get started to a certain extent, and we're gonna run through some examples here that I wrote up, starting with this one. So before we get into the examples and kind of explain the four or five things I have here, I just wanna start by saying one thing, is this video is for people that aren't the automationist or are not interested in spinning up Kubernetes clusters and or Axiom with a bunch of VPSs and all that stuff. This is something, again, it's gonna be mostly recon focused, but something that a lot of bug bounty hunters probably do every day anyway, and just something to put a seed in your head of why automation might be useful. And it only may take at most 10 or 15 minutes to get up and get running. It costs nothing and it can help you and supplement your bug bounty hunting. And it's just hopefully to put a little seed in some people for automation and what you can do with no time at all. So we're gonna go through some examples of stuff that, that I'm doing here, the way I started way back when, and the way I know a lot of people still do it today that's just really quick and really easy to get up and running. So some of these things are going to be basic and then the last two will kind of be like some of the stuff put together so all this stuff is in bash even though i obviously from other videos write stuff in other languages but bash works with linux well uh, the other thing is a lot of tools that run are made to run in linux and are made to be piped together and stuff like that so it works out really well and it's really easy to understand so these are a couple of bash script examples that you could get started in 10 or 15 minutes and run through automation the first one here is just strictly domains so this is something, again, all these are something you could cron job to run every day, every couple hours, every week, whatever it may be, on a very cheap VPS, out in the cloud, it would cause almost no traffic, you wouldn't, like, you wouldn't have to be worried about it, you can use some of these tools like we'll show to notify either your Discord or your Slack, and it's just something to get started to get, you, to get you at least in the game and up to date on some of these things. So one of the things that every bug bounty hunter needs no matter what is domains, so that's where we're starting. Because even if you're not an automation person, at the end of the day, it's nice to know what subdomains belong to certain targets. So before I start, you'll see down here how I did it, is I just made a directory called bug bounty in op. So if I go to my op directory here and cd into bug bounty, you'll see here that in this folder, I just made a folder for every program in that folder for every program will be where all of these files get created. So if we go into bug crowd and I will clean it up from some of my test runs here too. Now let's see what's in there right now. Okay, so these are some of the results that are in there right now. We'll get rid of them. Arm web servers, okay. So now if we see what's in there, everything will start with at bare minimum this roots.txt file. And that's because every program that you're gonna maybe run some automation on. We'll probably have some wildcard domains or stuff like that that you wanna find subdomains for. So that's all that's in here. So for the bug crown one, there's obviously just one, but that goes in every one. So you'll notice that a lot of these are very similar is when they run, they run on this base directory right here. That's just opt bug bounty. And then what they do is if it finds the base directory, which hopefully it should, it will go through every directory in that directory. So, which basically means it'll be in here and it'll go through all of these programs. So if I wanna add another program, I don't have to change my script at all. All I have to actually do is just add a new program folder and then add a roots.txt in the bottom and it'll jump, the automation will pick it up on the next run. And again, so if it's running on cron, so it's running every day at six in the morning and I wanna put a new program in there, I don't have to change my script, I don't have to change anything, I just add a new program file here with a new roots.txt file. So like if I wanted to add like Netflix, for instance, I would just go and make a directory for the program name called Netflix. And then inside Netflix, I could, you know, make something right here with a, with a roots.txt file. You'd nano it, whatever you want to do. And then it'd be in there. So let's get rid of that for now. So that's the start. And again, all of these are gonna start in the very similar way. If they go to that bug bounty directory, they loop through it and then go through all the programs and do something in every program. So this one is going through all of the programs. In each program, they're looking for this roots.txt file, which should be there, but just in case it's not there, there's a check for it. Um, and it will remind me to do it. But if it is there, then what it's gonna do is it's gonna you know, let me know that it's grabbing domains for a certain program name and it's just running, like I said, this is just an, an example. You can use whatever tool here you want. I'm using Subfinder, you can use a mass, you can use a brute force technique instead of a passive technique if you want to. You can use all of them put together. You can run a whole, you can run every one of your domain files or uh, domain tools here that you want to. 
but this is just an example with subfinder. So it's going to do subfinder using the roots.txt uh, file. So all those root domains will go into subfinder. And then all it does is it runs a new, which is a tool by Tom Nom Nom, which is basically just appending and then letting you know if any of the things that it tried to append that it could append and it deduplicates at the same time. So it only appends new things and then it prints to standard out the new things, which is perfect because Project Discovery makes a tool called Notify. And what that does is basically anything you print to standard out, it will notify to either a Slack or Discord channel. So we're gonna use Discord. I like Discord a little more than Slack, so bias. But basically what this would do, if you cron jobbed it, just this file, let's say it runs every day at five in the morning. So every day at five in the morning, it will loop through every program I have onboarded. It will look at their roots.txt file. It'll run subfinder to try and find any domain, any subdomains of all those root domains. And it will try and append it to my all domains.txt list. Anything that is any non domains that aren't there before, so the, during the deduplication and appending, any new domains that come out of that will go into notify and will hit on my uh, Discord. So that would show up, you could put it, you know, if you have Discord on your phone or your watch or whatever, or just on your computer, it'll pop up every morning with all the new domains that it found that day. From the day, it keeps a running list of all the domains you find for every file. This doesn't overwrite the file, it appends. So you're basically growing the list of domains constantly every time it runs. If any, if Subfinder picks up anything new, it'll dump it in there. And then you'd be notified of anything new. Now the next step possibly for me would probably be resolving. So again, it looks very similar. Here is your starting in your base directory, which is this. You're going through every program, but now instead of looking for roots.txt, you're looking for this all domains.txt file. And instead of doing subfinder, you're using Project Discovery's DNSX tool on the all domains. So you're taking the step from before. This could be something where like maybe you run a cron job for domains, and then maybe this is a cron job for later in the day, and it will take all the domains that you found from that subfinder run, and it will try and resolve them. And same thing, it will try and deduplicate and append them to a resolve domains and you could notify this out too if you want to. Now again, you might not want to notify on everything. Maybe you just want to notify on the resolved. Maybe you don't want to see new domains unless they resolve. Or, similar thing, there's you know this one here, which is just web servers. So it's you go into the same thing, you go through the programs, but instead, you're using the resolved domains instead of all domains, and you're basically finding web servers with HTTPX. And here, you would put it in a live domains file, and you would notify any new live domains right now the reason why i split this up is because you could have you can get it as granular or as built out as you want technically the linux bash way to do it i believe is to split everything out as much as you can and then pipe things into each other like you could run domain.sh piped in you know and resolve.sh and web servers.sh and they, and they would kind of run one into another but obviously you could just run them all together so instead of having three separate files, you could kind of combine them into this kind of just very quick and easy recon script. So what this is doing is it's starting with root.txt, just like before, and it's doing subfinder, but instead we're putting all the steps together plus an extra one. So what we're doing here is again, it's going through all the programs in that bug bounty directory, it's grabbing the roots.txt file, and it's gonna run subfinder on the root.txt, but all those are instantly gonna be piped into DNSX and get resolved. And then those are gonna get put into this slash Q flag on a new, just means I don't want it to print to standard out any of the new stuff. I'm just deduping and appending anything to this resolve domains. So I'm keeping a running file of my resolve.domains. And the reason I'm doing that is because then it will immediately go into HTTPX to try and find new web servers. And I'm only notifying a new web server. So now the only thing I'm getting notified of is the new web servers to my Discord, not all the other. SMAP is basically the passive version of NMAP. It just uses Shodan. So data could be anywhere up to seven days old, but it basically is a passive port scanning. So it's much easier than like chugging through and port scanning everything, but it will give me Shodan data on all the resolved domains and put them in an open ports text. And again, this is just an example of what you can do. You can add as many lines to this as you want, and it will go through each program every day on a cron job if you wanted to on a small little Linux box and do this every day. And you can add a bunch of stuff here. I Like, of course, you know, you can add nuclei here and hit all your resolve domains with nuclei. If you have custom templates, you can, you know, do anything you want to. And then from there, once you have this base, 
this could be your base. This could be your, re again, that's why I called it recon.sh because this could be your basic base for your bug bounty hunting. If you're not a huge recon person, this running on a small VPS gets you basic recon all the time, every day, or however often you want it to run for whatever programs you're interested in hacking in, and it will notify you of any new web servers that have popped up from these tools with very little effort. You don't have to be an automation expert. It's something that costs you nothing to basically get these new web servers in real time from these tools and you can put whatever tooling you want in here. Again, I stuck to like passive subdomain enumeration, but maybe you want to brute force every day. Great. Then brute force every day from a VPS, an exchange subfinder or keep subfinder, and under it, add a step to also brute force with your favorite brute forcing tool of choice. And you know, you could put the two DNS results together and do it that way. You can make this as big or as small as you want to, but the example here is supposed to just be that you can have something very basic that is what? 20 lines of code, no time at all. It takes like three commands to cron job it, to run every day, and it will notify you. So what I'm basically what I'm talking about here is it will run. Oops, I have to go back to the let's go back to my automation video here. So if I run recon again, I only have a few things. So I'm just gonna only let it run for bug crowd and then I'm then I'm gonna stop it. But what it's doing is it's running this recon script. So it's gonna run subfinder, dnsx, and put it in resolve.domain or resolve domains.txt, and then it's gonna run httpx, find me some live web servers and notify me, and then it'll run smap and find some open ports. And it will put all those into the into the file system for me. So you see all that ran, and now it's running on hacker one, so I'm just gonna stop it. But it found a bunch of open ports for me, all this kind of stuff on what it could find. And up here you saw live web servers. And if I go to my Discord server here that I set up just as an example, it's kind of hard to zoom in. But my automation through Notify just sent me all my new web servers because obviously there wasn't a file there. So anything I found was gonna be new. But in the future, now any new ping I get will be a web server that wasn't any of these because it's appending and deduping to the file I already have. So now I have basically a running inventory of bugcrowd.com domains. And if one pops up that's a new live domain, I get a notification and it takes no time at all. It costs me almost no time versus like hands on keyboard hunting time. So the argument I'm trying to make here is that this is something that everyone could have for almost nothing. And if you're in the bug bounty hunting game, it, it costs you almost no time and basically no money to run something constantly. So if stuff does go live, you might not find it at the exact same time as these people running huge automation engines, sure. But you'll still get a pretty timely notification of this stuff. One other thing I wanted to add is you can stretch this then onto whatever you may be. If, if you want to go look for endpoints, let's say, this is just another thing that you can keep adding on to it, just an example. So now that you have your web servers.txt from this thing, again, it takes your HTTPX on your resolve domains, puts it in web servers.txt. So now that I have a running list of all my live web servers, there's nothing saying that I can't do a whole bunch of other things with those live web servers, right? I, like this, so this is, for example, using Katana, which is a crawler from Project Discovery, to crawl all my live web servers and pull all the endpoints. So I have all the endpoints. And this is a live act, like obviously this is sending real traffic, but you could use something like XNL hackers way more and just again, keep it all passive and just pull passive stuff. You could, if you want to do quick checks, you could extend it to do quick checks. So something easy that you could do here if you really want to is you can use stuff like GXSS or KXSS or some of these stuff that check for just basic reflection. You can use QS replace dash A, grep for an equal sign, which basically means there's gonna be a parameter in the URL and check it for, you know, you can either go all the way and use like a Dalfox and like start scanning for XSS if you want to, or you can just like check for reflected characters and find interesting endpoints that have reflected characters, put those in a file and look manually yourself. The sky is obviously the limit. And I do think if some people adopt something like this, that it will find you enough interesting stuff that you might get sucked into the thing of, you know, adding onto it as you go. Like maybe if you start this crawling thing, you start finding some of these JS files that are interesting. So maybe you wanna add in secret scanning to those, great. Maybe you wanna pull in Truffle Hog and scan everything that you do for secrets, great. 
So you add it in and it keeps running on a cron job. And it's something that I think is a good starting point for a lot of people, people who either aren't really good at coding or writing you know, enterprise level software. You don't have to deploy your automation in Kubernetes or using some of the other stuff I've talked about in the videos. It doesn't have to be that complicated. It can start out as basic bash files that run every day using a cron job and saves to text files. It's, it's actually fine to do it that way. And I know a lot of people do. And it would also be very easy to write another bash file that runs every day and saves this data off your VPS and just pushes it to GitHub. And you could use GitHub as like your source of truth for your bug bounty recon data. And let's say you're hunting on your laptop while you're on the bus or when you travel, great, because you push your recon data to your GitHub every day. So it's so it's day-to-day -day updated. So all you would do is get pull, pull down your bug bounty data, and you would have all your live web servers, have all your live endpoints, interesting endpoints, all that kind of stuff on any device you want. It's not that hard to get something running with automation, and it doesn't have to be that complicated. So this was all I wanted to get out of this video is for some people who are who maybe might not be using any automation of any kind. I, I do think it's worth looking into some of the stuff. It, it takes 10 minutes to get it running. I would try it as much as you want or as little as you want. However it suits your hacking style, get into it, check it out, see what works for you, see what doesn't. If you have any questions, of course, DM me, Discord, ask other people. There's plenty of other people doing this. It's pretty basic. Again, I don't do a whole bunch in Bash. This is like very minimal Bash. There's probably an even better way to do this in Bash, to be honest. I don't write a lot of my stuff in Bash, but you know, you can do it in whatever you want. If you're if you're a really great Python person, like this can all still be Python. It doesn't have to be Bash. It can be whatever you want it to be. But check it out. I think you'll find that it's kind of interesting, and I think it'll get a lot of people hooked on automation very easily. Just starting from something simple. And not jumping right into like like half-baked almost enterprise solutions that that just take a lot of management and a lot of head trauma. Let me know what you find. Good luck. Keep hunting. That's all I got.